And we are so glad to have you guys with us again. So, of course, a big welcome to everyone who's tuning in through the live stream and also a big welcome who just joined us at the show floor here at the Nintendo booth. I'm not alone in the Nintendo Red Cube. No, nope, not at all. I'm joined by, of course, Chris. Hello. My friend from Nintendo of Europe and by a special guest, it's Jens Andersen. Hey, it's good to have you Hello. here. It's actually Andersen, right? It is. I'm sorry for that. So you are here to talk about Yoko's Island Express and I can't wait to start because it's just such a beautiful and cute game. Uh, it just gave us a lot of smiles when we, when we tried it for the first time and I know that Chris is also a big fan. Thank you very much. I'm really pleased to be here. That's good. So have you been around our booth already? I have. We are showing our, our game out here, so it's exciting to see everything that's going on here. Yeah, it's, right. It's so many people. It changed quite a bit compared to last year, so what do you think about the booth so far? I actually wasn't here last year, but oh. I, I can imagine you have the Switch now, <laughs> so it's a completely like new thing you're but, showing. But do you like it? it? It's great, like with the stage, with all the, all the arms showing, all the indie stuff on the sides. It's yeah. great. That's good. But as I said before, you're here to talk about Yoko's Island Express, so maybe you just want to give us a little insight about what is Yoko's Island Express. Absolutely. Yoko's Island Express, um, we are jokingly call it an open world pinball game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's uh, more of a Metroidvania or Pinballvania style game. It <laughs> seamlessly blends platform navigation with pinball mechanics nice. uh, with a large dose of adventure. And it's with a big, uh, no, with a really small dung beetle. I wanted to say with a big, but it's a really small <laughs> dung beetle who is like carrying and poking a little ball. But yeah. we're going to see that right now. Do you just want to dive into the game right now or what's oh, best for sure. you? Sure. Yeah, yeah, no, let's can, do it. We can talk over it. That's great. That's great. Yes, yeah, so this is Yoko. This is, this is the dung beetle and his ball. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think it's an ant, but it's a dung beetle. So he has this ball, he carries around with him, he's tethered to it, and he actually lives inside of it. Um, we are having a little bit of a technical... Something wrong? Mishap. <laughs> we were playing it five minutes ago, and everything was going all right. So uh, maybe you can just have a quick chat among yeah, yourselves. Yeah, sure, definitely. Okay, sure. So let's continue the talk about the... Uh, about Yuku later on. Let's go with the trailer for now and then we can go back into the game. All right. All right, let's do this. Here's the trailer. Have you ever heard of Makumana Island? It's a place of excitement and danger. Become a mailman and join the Island Express. <laughs> Exotic places, ancient cultures. Meet the friendly locals. Help make sure the mail always gets through. Such a cute a and beautiful game. I really Gorilla. love to play it. So we were having quite a bit of uh, technical problems, but I guess it's just le the last day of Gamescom, right? It's not just us, we're tired, it's super hot today. I guess it's also the hardware and everything that is all around us. So I guess we're fine now. Chris, can you give us a go? Let's see. No. <laughs> Same thing happening again. Same happening. I am pretty confident about the fact that it's just too hot inside here because our AC broke down a few minutes ago. That's so unfortunate. Okay, maybe Chris, you try to figure it out for now and we just continue our talk about right. the game itself. So we talked a little bit uh, about the game in advance and you told me that it's actually a game that already took you like five years to develop. Well, we've been working on it for four years now. Four years. But yeah, we're gonna release in 2018, so I'm sure we'll hit five years before we are done. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been working in it for a long time. It, it started off as a much smaller project, and we have been mainly three people throughout the development. Now yeah. we're five, trying to finish this out. Uh, and it's, been, it's just been a long, long development time. But that's been a good thing, because it's allowed us to sort of iterate and find what's really special about this, yeah, this thing. And it is really special, and that's pretty much my next question, because how do you come up with the idea like that? 
I have never seen something <laughs> like that before, like a dung beetle like yeah. poking a ball. And well, th that's the benefit, I guess, of, of, of working for such a long time on a, on a single concept. Like, it started off as a, a, a pinball adventure, like just that idea of stitching together various pinball tables and stuff. And then, you know, as we got that into prototype and uh, figured out we need a character for this game, and and we found out that like, we discovered having a dung beetle was something really interesting, especially, you'll see later on, but he's tethered to a rope to yeah, the ball, exactly. so he's flying around with the ball all the time. And then just trying to make this into a, a bigger thing, like uh, the game takes place on a tropical island, yeah. um, and just allow the player to navigate freely throughout this island and um, discover all the different areas, the, uh, the people living on the island, yeah. And I think we are, it's working now? Yeah. So yes, it's very much. Great. Thank you we, very much, We Chris. have a dung beetle and we have a ball, so I think we can so we are sorry finally get along. Oh, no problem. Yeah, so you have you have Yoko and he gets to meet the, the old postman. So Yoko is the new postman on Mokamana Island. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a cinematic showing him arriving to the island, being toppled over by a big wave. Um, but he's here to take over the post office. So the old postman is basically getting, get, getting out of there because something... Taking a vacation. <laughs> something strange is going on. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, it's sort of a metroidvania. Obviously, you have a map. Um, and throughout the game, you will unlock various abilities uh, and stuff uh, that you can sort of backtrack and discover new areas. As you can see, there's something going on. There are some quakes yeah. going on and everything um, tied to the story. But most importantly, you have the flippers. So the controls are really simple, uh, but you have the triggers to use the two flipper buttons. So you can walk walk with uh, with Yoko uh, back and forth, and then you can use the flippers to, to jump, basically. Um, this is one of the inhabitants on the island. He's uh, an eel that's blocking your path. So you need to figure out uh, the way around him. Uh, in this case, you need to find him something to eat. So if you open up the map, actually, you can sort oh. of see, um, yeah, it's it's up there to the right, uh, but there's no direct path going there. Yeah. So uh, you can just head into the environment. Um, so here you sort of see the, uh, the, the mix between the two gameplay modes. It's as seamless as possible with uh, flippers uh, integrated with uh, with Bo being able to move around um, in this Pacific style island environment. It's so beautiful, and it's also very relaxing. It's yeah. um, really um, something that I've actually used throughout the games. Come to sort of chill oh, really? every now and then. Oh, that's nice. Just uh, play a little bit of pinball. It, it is funny because pinball normally is actually a very twitchy, stressful kind of activity. But we really wanted to tone that down for this game, make it a little bit chill or casual. Um, so there's no, you can't die in this game. You can always try again. You do collect the fruit, yeah. as you can see up there, uh, and you can lose them in, in certain areas, but otherwise it's just, you can play at your own pace and, and just explore the world. Here's a guy sleeping yeah. um, that you can't really do anything with yet. Uh, telescope to show off the, the environment. Yeah, and basically this way you can also see how it really is a huge pinball machine in a way. Oh yeah. But at the same time also there's a lot of um, areas to explore. Yeah, so you have multiple small pinball-style areas um, that, and lots of secrets, um, stuff for you to collect. Uh. So we're collecting all these fruits right now, and I think Chris is going to show what he's going to yeah, do Yeah, so this is that. what we call the fruit altar. Uh, so the fruit is the main currency in the game, um, and you, you use it in this fruit altar, which is kind of this weird device thing that you throw fruit into. Yeah, so you got the, the first ability of the game. It's the party horn. Um, you can use it, uh, the noise maker. I will. We, <laughs> we can use, yeah, you can use it to wake this guy up, for example. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so he's giving you a little tip on, on where to find the mushroom. Yeah. Um, so that's where you're going right now. Um, and there are all these kind of optional ways you can go to either uh, find uh, fruit or other things throughout the game. And these things, um, <laughs> I've not really been able to figure out what they do in the demo. Yeah, so it's it's not accessible in the demo, it's, but it's part of the, the fast travel system. We're calling it the high rail or the... Oh, we haven't found on the name for it yet, but <laughs> as you discover the island, like larger areas, uh, we wanted, wanted to make sort of navigation uh, a little bit easier, but we didn't want to have a, a teleportation fast travel system. So these are actually cannon-like things uh, that you can use to get around really quicker, quickly throughout the game. Yeah, this is something that Tim must love, because every <laughs> time I was playing it, Tim was just laughing at how Yoku was being dragged by uh, behind his ball and flying through the air, bouncing around. Yeah, because he seems like such a nice fellow, right? <laughs> He's just like poking his ball around this map, this area, and always flying around like crazy. And he doesn't care. And it's he jumps up and keeps going. Yeah, it's exactly what he likes. Life of the dung beetle, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> so there's the, the toadstool that you want to get. Yeah, this is actually an area I particularly like, because this makes me really feel like I'm playing a pinball machine. Yeah, so this is a little, has a little bit more stuff going on in it. Like the, the thing, the blue thing there that you unlocked, uh, it's the scaraby style thing. It's uh, sort of the, the hidden skill and challenges throughout the game. Uh, we wanted to make sort of the main path quite easy to, to get through so people could yeah. really experience the game without getting stuck. But yeah. for people who want more of a skill challenge, there are all, the, all these things scattered throughout the game. So, so we got the mushroom. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, I think um, you know, so see, feed the eel, yeah. glide so it you, up. You get the quest type, but this is the inventory. So you can sort of gather stuff throughout the game and use them in various places. Um, and you should head back to the eel now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people accidentally press the A button, and that usually brings a smile on their faces. Yeah, I have to say that in my case, it's not so accidental <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Ever since I found out that you can do it all the time. I've been doing it multiple times. So there's obviously treasures scattered throughout the island uh, with some fruit. And if you actually go up to the, to the left, there's another little hidden thing there. Um, the purple thing there is, is a grub. Um, yeah, so, so it's basically a collectible in the game. Uh, once you get to the, the hub area of the game, you can use them to rebuild the village that's been devastated by the, oh. by the quakes. Yeah. Um, so you do, when you do that, you unlock additional quests and, and mechanics. Um, and here, like the drawbridge thing here is a shortcut. So the next time you want to go up there, you don't have to go all the way around. Right. So oh. now that we have the mushroom, I guess we can feed him, even though it says do not feed him. That's game logic for you, right? <laughs> yeah, so he's not taking that very well. Nah. But at least he's out of the way for now. I feel a lot safer <laughs> to just bounce around. So the game has uh, quite a lot of different environments. Like oh. this demo is only focused on the, the jungle areas. Um, yeah, so one thing that I wanted to ask is you saw a tree falling mm -hmm. uh, down just now. And I was wondering, what's, what's the role so, of that? What's the story behind that? Yeah, so Joker is getting to this island and to be the new postman. But there's stuff going on here. Uh, once he gets to the post office, which is his first quest, uh, he will get tasked with uh, uh, meeting the, the leader of the village. Mm. And he is uh, next to a big old Cthulhu-like god. Uh, kind of a scary thing uh, that's normally restless, but uh, normally sleeping, but right now he's restless. Oh. Uh, so he's being tasked to deliver letters to the three tribal chiefs throughout the island. And that's, that's the main quest of the game, trying to reach those remote areas of the game and gather the, the, the tribal chiefs um, to sort of find a way to w what's going on and, yeah. and help. Uh, help get the quakes uh, fixed. So the things you collected right now, they are what we call runes. Yeah. Uh, it's like an object that helps unlock these doors throughout the game. Um, so this is almost like a tutorial, Aaron, to show you how that works. 
um, in a little bit more claustrophobic and mysterious setting. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that we're now in a jungle, but there's also other places that Yoku tra travels to. Oh yeah, so the, the, the whole game is hand-painted, so there's no sort of tile-based system or anything. Um, each, each screen is unique, um, but uh, we have various sort of environmental centers. So we have the, the snowy peaks and we have the, the hot springs, sort of a Yellowstone like uh, with sulfur and, and stuff like that. And also we have caves with crystals and, mm. and scary stuff, uh, as well as the village as the center of the whole thing. Yeah, and this is something that I personally find very interesting because, for instance, like here I've collected my fruit mm -hmm. and <laughs> I see that I'm before I got my, my party blower and now I'm probably getting some upgrade if I would, uh, would. fill everything there. Uh, there but might be a way to do that in this demo, but it hopefully not, <laughs> because I'm not sure how that works right now. Uh, but yeah, no, that's sort of the, it's almost like a, a skill tree or a shop or a purchasing system, oh. but it has its own kind of quest. So it keeps expanding and introduces new things to you and, and you're trying to figure out what's, what's yeah. the end goal of that. Uh, so here's another NPC that needs help, uh, or a couple of them. Wow. Um, so this whole thing is filled with what we call suitlings, small creature. It's very inspired by Miyazaki movies, you know, the uh, Spirited Way and, uh, and those movies. Uh, but they are blocking the whole thing that the, the sun bunnies um, used to live. So Yoku needs to find a way to get rid of them, and you can see the whole orange glowy crystal thing underneath. So you need to try to get to that. Um, and like you said before, even though you can fall down into the thorns, it's not like you, it's game over or you die or something like that. Exactly, and you can try that. Like yeah. you, you lose a, a little bit of fruit, but then you get to go again. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's very friendly in that sense. Yeah, and I again like here we're collecting runes to um, fill up so that we can open a gate there. Yeah, so you need to collect three more or something like that, I think, and without draining. There you go. And one thing that I personally really like about this game is that um, you have this e exploration element and then you have the pinball element. Mm -hmm. And um, would you describe this as an adventure game more of oh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Pinball, pinball game? Yeah, no, um, like it, it's evolved through other developments, but like as I mentioned, pinball can be very uh, stressful and chaotic. So we toned that down, and, and it become more and more of a, of a proper adventure. And, yeah. and we made try to make this world really teeming with life and interesting, and, and something that would be fun to explore. So it's it's become much more of a, a, a proper adventure game. Uh, but we found really good ways to integrate all the pinball mechanics into it. So. It's a really good action mechanic. I think pinball is kind of underused as a game mechanic in general. Like physics-based mechanics are always great I, fun. I think what makes it great is that you have Yoku just sort of flying after his <laughs> his ball, and it just makes everything you do feel sort of you have this little bit of remorse for sending him <laughs> out to <laughs> to fly. Yeah, and we added ragdoll to him as well, yeah. so it doesn't look too comfortable. There you go. You got shot up into the air. Oh, at least I can still <laughs> make a party of it. <laughs> and that's it for the demo. That's fantastic. So thank you very much for that right now. As we said before, Chris, like when I mentioned that I just love the fact that you, uh, Yuku is like flying after the ball, you couldn't take your eyes off it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. After you said that, basically for me, it was like, OK, um, every time I um, do the pinball elements, I feel a little bit hesitation for sending <laughs> Yoku away. <laughs> yeah, right. So let's uh, get a quick recap of what we just saw. So we saw Yoku's Island Express, which is, as you just said, uh, both more or less, it's an adventure game with pinball aspects. Maybe you can describe it like that, if that's fine for you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like open world pinball, we joke, but really yeah. it's a mix between an adventure game with pinball mechanics and platforming elements. Yeah. Um, so this demo is quite linear, but once you get further than the, the demo, it opens up a little bit, so you can sort of explore in whatever direction you want. 
Um, but you do unlock abilities throughout that allows you to backtrack and unlock previously unvisited areas. And lots of NPCs throughout that uh, need help delivering, yeah. either delivering mail or with other things going on. And at the same time, you are trying to rebuild the post office, which is sort of Joker's personal, personal goal. Perfect. So, and so when are we able to actually play the final game? So right now we can only say 2018. Okay. Um, I'm sure we will have get a little bit more specific soon, um, but that's it for now. All right, Chris. Do you have any final questions? No, just thank you for <laughs> yeah. giving me something to chill with during a busy game. So. Our pleasure. <laughs> thank you for having me here. Of course. So thank you very much for coming by, Chris. Thank you very much as thank well you. because. As we said before, this is actually our very last Nintendo Red Cube show going out into the world. So maybe you want to say something as well, Chris? I just thank you to everyone who has been watching us uh, throughout the last week. I think uh, it's been a joy for us, and I hope it's also been a joy for you. And um, we've been able to show you a lot of new content for our first party titles, but also for some of our beloved Nindies. And uh, I think I'm really happy that we have been able to use that balance because uh, I think it shows the, the, the uh, variety of games that we have coming to Nintendo Switch and of course also some titles for Nintendo 3DS. Exactly. So we just tried to have a good time right here and we hope we were able to bring that over to you guys over there. So thank you very much for you guys or to you guys for tuning in and obviously also thank you very much to everyone who attended the show floor here at the Nintendo booth and watched the Nintendo Red Cube episodes on the big screen at the battle stage. We're going to continue this day obviously with, if I'm not mistaken, a tournament or are we going Okay, we're going, I just heard it over there, sorry. We're going to continue this day with a big tournament. We're going to play arms, as we said before. We're going to have Harris, Bowie, and 